Only one player in history has won the Open more times than Tom Watson. His first Open victory came when he was 25, and as recently as 2009, he came agonisingly close to winning a sixth aged 59. The Kansas native always had star potential, but few would have predicted Britain's fabled Lynx courses would be the stages on which he would shine brightest. Over the years, my roots in Scotland, uh, in particularly Scotland, have run deep, and they've grown deep. And my love for the game and the way it's played over here, the way the, the, the country embraces the sport, the way it's part of the fabric of the society, the way the Open Championship is the world open. It, it's a special event. It's unique. It's played on Lynx golf courses, which there are no other uh, championships are played on Lynx golf courses, major championships. Oh, by the way, it's the oldest championship in golf. And to win it uh, at Clara Jug is uh, probably the most iconic trophy there is in golf. Watson first crossed the pond to play in the Open 43 years ago at one of the most feared courses on the rotor. Carnoustie was the first Open Championship venue uh, I stepped on back in 1975, and it was very much like uh, the conditions uh, that we found this year. It doesn't matter whether there's no wind or soft, it, it, it has teeth. It really does have a, uh, a way of getting, getting to you. On debut, Watson found himself right in the mix going into the final round, hoping to hunt down the leader, Jack Newton. In typically testing Scottish conditions, he was spurred on by some timely words of wisdom. I was lurking you know, close, close enough to the lead, four or five shots out, three shots out. Really didn't have high expectations, but I knew I was close enough. If I made a little bit of, of a run, you know, I could get there. I, I didn't the first three rounds, and then the last round, walk into the first tee, I ran into uh, my, my good friend to be, By Byron Nelson, who gave me some very, very good advice. I said, and I asked him directly, I said, what will it take to win today, Byron? And he said, you should even part a day, you'll be right there at the end. And it's there. Nine under 279 for young Watson. Watson caught Newton, and the pair ended up alongside each other atop the leaderboard, setting up the final 18-hole playoff ever to decide an open. Oh, no. Oh, no. Watson handled everything Carnoustie could throw at him, and after 90 holes was crowned champion at the first time of asking. No, no. And back at the Mr. Newton. So would you believe that? Young Tom chips in for an eagle three to go one ahead. My game plan was just try to keep it out of the gorse uh, and the bunkers, you know, those things, and, and to make a few putts along the way. Actually, in the playoff, I, I three putted three holes in a row. But there was never one shot that uh, uh, separated Jack and, and, and me in the, in the playoff. And it was, a, you know, it was quite a battle. Two years later, Turnbury hosted perhaps Watson's greatest career moment. The famous duel in the sun saw him take on his golfing hero, Jack Nicklaus, in one of the event's all-time great tussles. Oh, would you believe that? The two shared the lead through 54 holes before accelerating away from the pack on the final day. 77 at Turnbury, that was, uh, you know, that, that was kind of a watershed moment in my career when I... I beat Jack uh, you know, by one, you know, the best player in the game, and uh, it gave me the confidence that I could beat the best in the game. Has he got the right club? Oh, has he got the right club? My word, what a tremendous battle this young man's had with Jack Nicklaus. And from there, really, my career uh, really took off after that. It's the type of confidence boost I was dreaming about and I was working for it and I got there and I, I just continued to want more. Those first two open wins both ended in tight showdowns, but Watson's third at Muirfield in 1980 was a different proposition. He led by four with a round to go and was the man in everyone's sights. Uh, again, a good a lucky break on the very first hole uh, in the final round. I hit my tee ball in the left rough, took a two iron out, and I hit a lousy shot way off to the right. And there's a short right bunker at the first hole at, at Muirfield. 
and I caught the right side of that bunker. It was going to go in the deep stuff like that. And it caught the side slope and caromed, you know, like it's off a bumper on a snooker table, just boom, like that, uh, onto the green to the back edge of the green. I two putted from about 75 feet for par. And I, you know, I was going for a big numbers. That was, a, that was a really good break right in the opening hole. I finally kind of got it going mid, midway through the round, made a bunch of birdies in a row and kind of pulled ahead. Good rhythm, wide backswing, good balance. Then a superb shot from Watson. That ball bit in and stopped pretty quickly. You're never really comfortable with a lead playing Lynx golf because of the bunkers. You get it in the, in the wrong bunker as I did at Muirfield playing the senior open. Uh, the year I won that, I had, had a three shot lead coming in the last hole and I ho hooked my ball into the left fairway bunker up against the wall. I had no shot. I tried to get it out just over and it came back in the bunker. Then I hit it out sideways and I had to get it up and down in three to win the championship from there. And I was, you know, I was still 190 yards away from the green. And so that's what can happen to you in, in Lynx Golf. Look at John Vandevelt here at Carnoustie. You know, you, you're just never safe. Back-to-back -back triumphs in 82 and 83 took Watson one victory shy of Harry Varden, the only man with six open titles. Those wins came at Royal Troon and Royal Birkdale, respectively, meaning he'd conquered five different open venues, and Watson believes his success comes down to a quality shared with other Lynx legends. Technically, uh, my short game made it so that I could win, and I was very good uh, around the greens. You know, when you're playing Lynx golf courses, you're going to miss a lot of greens because of the bounce and how firm they the greens are, you're not going to, you know, the ball's not going to land on the greens and stop. And you're going to have lots of long putts. And uh, my forte was putting and, and chipping the ball. I could hit the ball a long way and high if I had to. And you kind of look at it, you know, Seve was just, you know, he was very good around the greens. Uh, you know, Seve was making Watson pars uh, after Watson was making Watson pars. Meaning, you know, getting the ball up and down out of the ball washer. If I have to look back on it, that's probably the, the thing that really propelled me to be, you know, to be able to win here. Few are as intimately acquainted with golf's most iconic trophy as Watson, who understandably finds it hard to pick a favorite victory. Well, I, I like the fact it was on the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, and the fifth time. Now it's, uh, actually the Claire Jug changed because they had two bands of silver. In 1977, when I won a Turnberry, I was the last name there and then they had to go to a, a new band of silver so they had three bands of silver in there so uh, it changed a little bit in, in the bottom of the trophy but the Clara Jug still probably has a little bit of that champagne I put in it the first time I won it in 1975. It's seen a lot of uh, you know, wonderful moments with the champions especially this champion. <laughs>